Hi, in this video I wanted to answer a question that I often get asked in the comments and also by email is what soldering station do I use? So I think probably the second or third video that I've ever uploaded, I'll put a link down below, is me unboxing the Metcal MX5251 soldering station uh, which I purchased about probably four or five years ago. Uh, but you can see here this is the listing at Farnell and it's not cheap at all so this is minus VAT as well so uh, there's VAT to be added on top. So £890 uh, for this soldering station uh, with the desoldering gun. It's a little bit cheaper if you just go for the iron itself. But that is very expensive, especially for a hobbyist. So most people are normally taken aback uh, once they see the price. And um, yeah, it isn't quite what they're expecting. But it does have a lot of really nice features. Dumps a whole lot of power into the tip because of the way that it does the heating. Um, quite different from a standard soldering station. So it does have quite a few benefits and it's a lot quicker. Uh, and a lot better at dumping heat into the tip but yeah the price is very high so i've got some soldering videos coming up i've already recorded a couple uh, but the soldering tutorials are really to try and help um, hobbyists that haven't soldered before just want to improve their skills and i thought maybe it's a little bit unfair to use such a high-end soldering station uh, because it may be giving sort of me an unfair an advantage um, so i had a look on banggood to see uh, what would be a, a soldering station which i'd try and recommend for uh, hobbyists to use at a slightly better price point. So having a look around, uh, this is the station that I um, decided to have a look at. Uh, currently on Banggood this is retailing for around £40, uh, but there are various different versions. So there's one with a slightly different handle here, uh, that's almost half the price of it. Uh, there's one for £45, uh, another one for £40. So there's a few different configurations. We'll have a little look at them more closely. But one thing that I really liked about this one is the fact that it runs from a DC power pack. Um, so this particular model uh, runs from 24 volts and it's actually rated at 70 watts into the tip. Um, so it's really quite a powerful iron. Uh, but I really like the fact that it's got a separate power pack which gives you a whole load of flexibility that you wouldn't normally have. So first of all, um, you're not tied into using this particular power pack. So if you have a preference for a particular brand and you don't necessarily trust uh, one of these type that you'd get with your uh, goods from China, you can switch it out for something that's rated for, um, this, this one's rated for about 72 watts, but um, you can swap in your preferred replacement um, and happily use this really safely. The other nice thing is if you really were in a pickle you can run it from a 24 volt battery or something like that so you could um, do some soldering while um, not at home. And the other thing is that it gives you the flexibility of using this in a different country. So uh, one thing that happened at work um, is when I had to travel to the US um, I realized that we didn't have a soldering station that I could use over there uh, while I was at the client site. So I did actually purchase a, uh, another soldering station uh, for that trip, uh, but it was expensive and there's not that many about that have the universal input voltage. So the fact that you can use a power brick like this um, and it's rated universally 100 to 240 volt AC just gives you a whole lot of flexibility. But um, if you have a look at the, the images on the, uh, the Banggood website, you can see actually there's two different variants. So this is the, the sort of slimmer one that I uh, have got here for review. But they do do a version with the um, AC power adapter sort of built into the casework. This is one ready built uh, and that you can buy it in sort of a kit form. And if any of you watch John Orbiter's channel, uh, you'll obviously have seen this. If you haven't had a look at his videos, I highly recommend that. So I'll put the link down below for that as well. Um, but what I found quite surprising is you can buy this one for £23 or you can buy one that's a kit and um, you know, isn't really any difference in terms of performance but it's um, almost twice the price. So these ones here that I've uh, particularly picked out are absolute bargains and really the difference between these is the handle uh, that comes with it. So I chose the metal handle uh, because what I really like about the Metcal is you can hold it right at the tip. The tip doesn't get warm here. Uh, and you've got really good dexterity, you're really close to the uh, solder joint that you're trying to do instead of um, holding it much further up and having a really long um, soldering iron tip. And this one is pretty similar, so if you compare them side by side, uh, it's just marginally longer, uh, but again, you've still got really good dexterity, and the handle is really lightweight, and 
not too badly built at all. So this bit's aluminium and then you've got this um, rubbery handle. Um, so yeah, I thought this was really interesting. Um, this is the unit itself and they're all pretty similar. There's quite a few of these on the market, uh, but you just plug in your 24 volts into the back and you've got a power switch. And then there's no LED screen with a ton of menus and different settings that you can change. And I believe there is a, um, a whole string of different firmwares that you could put on here and modify uh, as you desire. Um, but yeah, this is really nice form factor. I also bought all these tips. Um, so we've got a whole load of different types, which we'll have a look at in some soldering tutorials. Uh, there's probably more than I need here, but there's a couple of different ones uh, which I find quite useful. So this kind of chisel tip is often useful for PCB assembly and there's a slightly smaller version here. Um, and then we've got a couple which we'll use when we do the SMD soldering tutorial. And these type of tips are really good for drag soldering uh, across the, chip, uh, the legs on your chip. And yeah, there's a whole different um, assortment of uh, different tips. So the other thing that's quite amusing is that one soldering iron tip for the Metcal, just one cartridge here, costs the same as all of this basically. So just to give you an idea of how expensive these tips are, they're about £40, £30, depending on which one you get. And this whole bunch of equipment here that I've got here was exactly that price uh, with all the tips. So uh, yeah, this is really, uh, really good value for money. It's basically, um, the tips themselves, I think, are rip-offs of Heiko um, soldering tips. Heiko's not really a brand in the UK, so I'm not that familiar um, with uh, the whole Heiko soldering station range. But these have the heating element in the tip along with the temperature sensor. Um, so you get sort of maximum heat delivery as far as you can with a standard resistive heating element into the tip. And then you get um, really good feedback uh, for the temperature control in the soldering station. Right, so I've just hooked up the bench power supply to this at, uh, with a current limit of three amps. So let's fire this up. And there we go, you can see that's heating up really rapidly. That's about seven or eight seconds up to operating temperature. Um, we should be able to melt some solder on the tip. There we go, so really nice quick heat up. Um, we've got tons of menu options on here. I won't go through all of them, uh, but you press it once to set the temperature. So really nice, uh, easy control there. And I think you hold it down to go to the menu and you can adjust things like how long it takes before it goes to standby. And it's got a little uh, tilt sensor in this particular handpiece, so it can detect when it hasn't been moved for a while and then go into standby. And because it's quite quick to heat up, you can set that to uh, something like 30 seconds or so, uh, and you probably won't uh, notice too much trouble. Uh, and then there's also sleep mode, so if it's not moved for an even longer period of time, you can just basically turn it right off. Um, and then there's a couple of th different things like boost mode, which allow you to temporarily boost the temperature for some big um, solder joints or something like that. I don't particularly like that method um, just because you end up with a very high temperature and then you can't try and dump all that heat and then um, you can't sustain that heat into the joint. So that's where a soldering station like the Metcal is ideal because it has a lot more thermal capacity and can just dump loads of power into the uh, joint. Uh, but a lot of people adjust the temperature um, depending on what kind of soldering they're doing. Um, there's a an adjustment for the cold temperature um, for the thermocouple uh, automatically determines what tip you're using and you can enable or disable tips in there. And then there's things like how coarse you want the granularity on the rotary encoder for setting the temperature and various other bits and bobs. Um, you can set the time on here as well and things like that. But um, lots of control, uh, really good for people that like to fiddle uh, with their settings quite a lot. Uh, but the form factor is really nice, it's really lightweight and it's also really well built. It's in a nice little uh, aluminium case and this is a really brightly lit room and the OLED's still really readable. But I do really like this form factor and they do do a hot air station as well, uh, either combined or a separate unit uh, like this. Um, so I think that would be pretty good as well. I might try and get one of those uh, for review as well. But um, yeah, I really, um, I've been using it a couple of times. So I'm going to try and use it in the soldering videos, uh, but it does seem to work uh, quite well. I've got the, uh, one of my soldering boards here. 
Uh, we'll just quickly do a quick test to see how it is on, uh, on here. So you can see that does the soldering really nicely, no problems at all. And for your average sort of PCB soldering, uh, this is going to be absolutely brilliant. And as I said, you get really good dexterity because you're really close to the tip. Um, so you can really get in there um, and do uh, some really fine soldering. So that was just a quick look at this soldering station. And if you're interested in taking a look at this on the Banggood website, I'll put the links down below. Again, don't forget to look for discount codes because you can often get them even cheaper uh, than the prices that I'm showing. But we're going to do some more soldering videos soon. I think we've got a surface mount uh, soldering video coming up next. Um, but we'll use this soldering station and see how we get on with that. Another video that I've got coming up which has uh, really gone a little bit out of control is I thought it'd be really interesting to have a look at a few different types of solder uh, and compare them and see how we get on with them, including uh, some very cheap Chinese ones. But this has turned into uh, a... Um, it's, well, it's got out of hand basically. I bought the world supply of different types of uh, solder and I've got another one of these including some very expensive uh, solders and then some very cheap Chinese ones. And I thought it'd be interesting to see uh, how they compare. Similarly, I've been buying a whole ton of different flux um, cartridges and pens and tubs of flux um, and we'll do a video on when you should use flux and um, you know that kind of thing but I thought it'd be interesting also to compare these because, um, you know, Amtec stuff, which we don't use in the UK really. Um, again, it's not really a brand that comes over here that often. Uh, but a tube like this comes in at $15. Um, whereas you can buy uh, a pot of it for like £2 or £3 from a different brand. And I'm not necessarily convinced that spending a huge amount of uh, money on the fluxes is necessarily worthwhile. But we'll do a fair comparison. We've got a whole load of different types in a whole range of different price ranges. Uh, so that's another video that will be coming up. So I hope you found that video useful. Have a look at this in the links down below and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.